there's so much that swimming will offer you for fitness and fun that it's so worth the effort to learn to swim. But a quarter of the US population of adults can't swim, so you're not alone. We can help. That's what this course is all about, is empowering you and giving you the tools to be able to teach yourself to swim. Do it, we are going to work on our glide. If you can master gliding on top of the water, it's gonna make you feel much more comfortable because you're gonna be more efficient when you're swimming. And then we're going to transition into exhaling underwater while we're gliding so you can take a breath when you come out of the water. Then we'll move on to pop-up breaths and we'll actually start to use our arms at that point. Pop-up breaths are taking a breath and going right back underwater. If you hold your breath, you won't be able to take a pop-up breath. So breathe and exhale. And then we'll move from that to freestyle, breathing on the side. something that will allow you to pour less water like a sponge or Mr. Octopus here. It is good to have a pair of goggles. Goggles will help you to feel more comfortable in the water. It's good to have a pair of goggles that help you to feel more comfortable with your eyes in the water. Most people even with goggles on will close their eyes when they go underwater. If you have your eyes open underwater then you're going to have less anxiety right off the bat. The way you wear goggles is you put your thumbs underneath the straps, put the seals under your eyebrows. The seals need to go under your eyebrows. <laughs> the seals need to go under your eyebrows, otherwise they won't seal and they won't keep the water out. So it's important that you pull the seals onto your eyes, under your eyebrows, pull the straps back. Once you should use Goggles that have two straps are a lot better for adults because you're going to have pressure on the higher part of your head and the lower part of your head that keeps the goggles on your eyes properly so they don't leak. Make sure they're under your eyebrows just like that. And that's going to keep the water out of your eyes when you go underwater. Goggles, bucket for pouring. I recommend using an oversized noodle or a noodle that would be pretty thick. It's better than a kickboard 
for beginners because you're able to hold on to this under your arms. So we're drawn to the ocean, right? We love the ocean, we love the lakes, we love the rivers. I, this is my favorite place to be in the whole world. But out there in the, in the ocean or in a, in a river or lake, it also can be very important to be prepared and, and to make sure that you're not going to get so scared that you can't even think. So it's it, the best thing we can do is we can learn how to, if we're in the water, how to, how to make sure that we're not gonna use too much energy. We're not going to get so worked up and scared that we're going to panic. Panic is the, is the feeling that you get when you just can't think anymore, that you're so worried about trying to stay on top of the water that you can't even think. You have to focus on your breathing. Remember, breathe in through your mouth, out through your nose. Control your breathing. That's the key to treading water. It's not using your arms and your legs super fast. It's by using your arms slowly. We call that scrolling when you reach your arm out and you stretch and you, you go back and forth with your arms. You can use your legs pushing out against the water. But that's not really what's gonna keep you safe and, and on top of the water and not going under and getting scared. It's breathing in and out. Controlling your breathing in and out. Aspect. You have to slow down, you cannot panic. Panic is what will cause you to suck in water and to have bad things happen when you're in the water in a, in a bad situation. Don't want to flat, that's good. Put you up and down because you're pushing against the water, up and down, you don't want this. You don't want to kick like a flutter kick, you don't want to do little kicks low like you would on your belly. Because that's going to use all your energy, you're going to get cramps. You have to stretch your legs out, you want to be as wide as you can on the surface of the water. And focus on your breathing. Breathe. Catch a cloud, sing the fish. Catch a cloud, sing the fish.
first thing we're going to do is we're going to have this underneath our arms in shallow water. Remember, we're always going to work shallow water, the stairs are your friend. So you put your legs behind you, let your legs float. I want you to look up. This is where you're going to breathe. Many adults will feel like they can't get their head out of the water to breathe, but you have to get in the habit of looking up. So breathe, catch a cloud is what I call it because you gotta look up clouds and then growl or sing to the fishes, exhale underwater, blowing out of your nose, making a noise. As you see, when I put my face in, my legs rise because that will put me into a streamlined position. The lower I put my head, the further my legs will rise. You control your body position with your head. You want to move on to some stroke mechanics. So, you want to be really good at catching the water. The part of your arm that you want to use against the water is your forearm and your body. That will pull the arm super fast through the water, thinking that that speed is going to help propel them forward, but the opposite is true. You should feel resistance. You should, your arms shouldn't easily move through the water. You should feel resistance every time you pull through the water. So a great way to start practicing the feel, or practicing may not be the best word, the best way to get a feel for the water is to reach back, catch the water with your arms, and push the water forward. You should be able to really move the water. Okay, so you're gonna use a wall, or soon the noodle, put your arms in front of you, pull down, through, feeling resistance the whole time, and then where does the power come from? Your shoulders turning. So pull through, shoulders turn, elbow up, fingers will drag on the surface. Focus on your breathing. Exhale, breathe. Exhale, breathe. The arm strokes and legs, you wanna do this in pieces. You wanna focus on your arms, focus on the streamlined position, and then put it together and focus always on the breathing when you're swimming. So let's move on to starting to breathe on the side. So we're gonna do similar drills that we've been doing using the wall, keeping our feet on the bottom. Now, when you breathe on the side, you have to press your head down against the, your arm or up against the water to be able to get the room to breathe. Your natural reaction is gonna to be to lift your head up to try to take a breath. But the opposite is what you need to do to be able to get a breath. You have to press your head against your arm. I call it a breathe button because you have to press your ear down on your arm. Press it down and look up. Your shoulders turn, so it's easier when you're breathing to get your shoulders to turn. But as you go through with your, your stroke cycle, the other side, your arm, your shoulders may not turn. So you always have to be very conscious of your shoulders turning, otherwise your arms will feel stuck. 